It's easy to think of hatching and cross-hatching as being a way to put, in effect, tonal value into our drawing. And of course, that is a very important uh, application of it. But we can also use hatching to actually create the detail, to create the various elements of our drawing beyond just shade and shadow. So that's what I want to demonstrate in this scene of a Yorkshire cottage with the first light of the morning hitting it. I'm drawing a fairly bare outline because I want to create the details with my hatchwork. Now at the end of this, there will be three or four minutes of my hatching at real time if you're interested in seeing how it looks when it's done in real time. But of necessity, of course, I do need to speed that up. But of course, you can also adjust the speed of the YouTube video that you're watching. And I have a very short video on how to do that if you're interested. And with these last lines done, we're ready for our hatching. I decide to start with this dry stone wall that's in the foreground. It's a fairly uh, distinctive part of the drawing and it's a very distinctive part of the part of Yorkshire where this scene is. So I start doing some hatching lines, firstly to highlight the darker shadow areas, which is particularly where stones don't come up very hard against each other. But I'm also doing some hatching lines to indicate shadows being cast by individual stones with the, the rather rough surfaces that they have and the way they curve around in fairly unpredictable and certainly in very undressed ways. So creating this sense of, of irregular shape is an important part of capturing the scene, the texture, and importantly, the details of the wall. It's important that we see that this is a, in some ways a rough and ready, although I think very beautiful wall. It's probably my favorite type of um, wall construction. And they're incredibly sturdy when they're looked after. And some of this line work, some of this hatching that I'm doing on the wall can also represent the color, local color, because some of the stones do end up staining at different speeds to others or having moss on them or something. And so they do end up some being darker than others. So having done something across the whole wall, I decide the best thing is now to go to this um, end wall of the house or front wall of the house, depending which way you look at it. So I do a little bit of hatching uh, just on the edges of that front uh, triple window that we can see. And I decide to add a little more line work just before I start to hatch on this wall. Now I'm going to do hatching on this wall, both to indicate individual bricks and also to indicate the shade of, not the shade, it's the shadow of this large tree against, against the end of the house. So at this point, I'm doing the bricks. So this is just indicating the fact that, that these bricks, or they're actually stones, they're not bricks, that these stones are of different colors. And then the shadow will be laid over the top. So presumably the darker stones that I've now hatched will become proportionally darker when the shadow is put over the top. So I'm doing an outline because I do want to capture the shadow shape fairly precisely and particularly some of the, if you like, islands of light that have branch shadows going through them as well. And it's easy to just obscure all of this very quickly when I start to do the hatch lines. So I, st I start with hatching and then I go on to cross hatch, but I hatch to get a nice straight vertical line. I like to do my hatching, hatchwork, line work that reinforces the, the shape, the direction, the form of the surface. And so with buildings, that often means I hatch straight down. But when I finish this hatching, I decide that it's not quite dark enough. So I change the hatching into cross hatching, which simply means we do another direction of lines on it. But because I wanted to have a fairly strongly vertical feel, when I put the second lot of lines over the top, the angle is not very great. So the, the sense is still very much a, of a vertical wall coming through. So I add the second layer of lines at a slight angle to the first. And now I just add also a bit of hatching to the side of the house there. 
and having a look just at some of the detail areas to see if I'm happy with that. And I think that the detail of the house has really come out now. And also not just the detail of the house with the stones, but the detail of the scene in terms of with the shadow of this large tree. Now this is the actually the, um, the cross hatching section where I angle the line slightly, which does significantly increase the effect of tone that we're seeing on the wall. So I decided to get the chimney finished, so I've got the house pretty much done before I move on to the fairly significant amounts of foliage. This tree is obviously going to be important and probably, uh, in my mind, the greatest challenge with the hatching. There's also some shadow on this uh, further back wall. So now I'm just really playing around for a little bit while I work out exactly what I'm going to do next. So I decide to do this foliage now that's a shrub or several shrubs in between the tree and the dry stone wall. Because generally it's, it's best to do the closer things first in my mind and to work out the strength of our line work, the darkness of our of our tonal effects, whether we create them with tone or whether we create them with, with line, with hatching and cross hatching. Because normally I'm creating a sense of, of distance by lightening the tonal effect of my line work. Not so much in this drawing, however, because all of this is relatively close. For me, this is a very shallow plane. There's very little depth in terms of the closest object to the furthest object. So you might have noticed there is actually a person standing there who I've made anonymous for the sake of this video. This is early morning light. That's uh, really the first, the first light of the day that's striking this house, which is why it does have a fairly soft and yellowed feel to it. It was a, a beautiful 5.30 a.m. morning in Yorkshire. So now I come to the tree, which is going to be the trickiest part for the hatching. Now you'll notice here that I'm doing my line work primarily horizontally because I feel this is the best way to represent the curvature, the circumference curvature of the tree, of the trunks. And so following my principle of trying to emphasize the underlying form with our hatchwork, I'm doing my hatching where possible horizontally. Now with these branches, there is a lot of shadow and, uh, well, there's a lot of uh, sections of branches coming in and out of shadow, in and out of shadow as we move along. And then we also have behind the branches or through the branches, we have a whole lot of leaf matter, foliage, that's generally very dark. And what I've tried to do as I've done this hatching, as I've done this line work, is to create an emphasis on what's there and what we can see by matching parts of the branches that I've made darker with my hatching with light, clear sky behind. And where my branches are going through a patch where sunlight is getting through the tree canopy and hitting them, I try and work it so that there's some dark foliage behind that to really pop that out. And that's going to create the effect of much more detail because I'm, I'm counterplaying light and dark off each other, but I'm flipping whether it's the branch that's light and dark and whether it's the sky versus the dark foliage that's light or dark behind it. So pay attention to how I do this. I'm pretty happy with how it worked in, in this drawing, in fact, because this tree is a very important part of this scene. In some ways, it anchors the scene with its depth um, and its, and its, um, well, its size, but, but its darkness as well. It has, I think, a, a great visual presence. And therefore, it's important that we, that we get this. And, and it's also, of course, a framing element as well. So it's important that we capture it well because it does draw attention. In some ways, it's going to be more dramatic than the house. So at this point, I'm really just now checking my reference. 
seeing, okay, where are the branches that are getting lighter, darker, lighter, darker, lighter, darker? And when I was drawing this originally, it was important to note where branches were coming in front of other branches or going behind other branches, which in a reference such as this can be difficult to work out. But if we don't work out something, then we can't draw accurately. So there, I've been doing what I just suggested on the tree, and now I'm making some adjustments to just create a little more tonal variation between adjacent areas, have some lights coming up against some darker areas. And the last area is all these grasses along the front, which are sort of shooting up and then falling forward. I don't know if anyone's watched my videos on tufted grass lately, but this is the effect, this is what I'm thinking trying to do these. So I'm more trying to draw these by capturing the shadows rather than by drawing a lot of lines to represent the grass. I've seen something that I wanted to add more detail to. I must have been looking up at the tree while I was doing the grass and thought, no, I need to do a bit more work on that. It's not, not looking dark enough. It's looking a bit underdone. So now I come back to the grass and, and doing these shadow areas, which you, you probably know is called drawing by negative space because we actually draw the spaces between the objects, not so much the objects themselves. And the spaces are often beautifully outlined or formed by shadows that the actual objects are casting, which can be very helpful for things such as this that really are too detailed to draw. We really are drawing the effect of grass almost every time. And now I decide to put some tone on some hatching on the wall towards the right as if it's curving away slightly and therefore moving out of this strong sunlight because I thought it would add some visual interest to our scene. It would let me make it darker than the house behind and again it's just giving us more variation of of tonal values to play with and to allow easy separation of various elements and planes of depth in our scene. And this is pretty much it. What do you think? G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. You might notice I've added more hatching here just to increase the, the value, make it darker. And I think that created a little more helpful variation in the values down in this section and counterbalance the darker tones up here. And in effect, it says this wall is curving away and it's coming into shade. And if you'd like to have a go doing this hatching yourself, I'll post the line drawing onto my community page so you can just get straight to the hatching part to practice. And in just a few seconds, you'll be able to watch some real time drawing of the hatching if you want. But in the meantime, whatever you're drawing and however you're drawing it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.